Welcome to Whip an Opinion. Today's opinion is about how I think it's disgusting the amount of exploited children on the internet. This will be a deeper conversation. I do have other Whip it Opinions, for example, one about how I think parking lots suck that are more lighthearted. I have story times that are way more lighthearted as well. I also have Whip and Chat Rambly Lifes if you wanna see what my life's up to. So if this isn't your cup of tea, go ahead and click off because I might get angry, ranty, very opinionative, opin opinionative, opinionative? Whatever, yeah, and I might not be very friendly because I have thoughts and, well, opinions. I am working on Seasons Change by Diamond Art Club. The artist is JoJo's Art, and this is it. I will be using Diamond Art Club's pens. I'm just gonna say this, stop exploiting children on the internet, whether you are a manager of some sort for regular media content or their momager or dadager, like you're, you're the parents. Um, family channels, I'm going through everything from family channels to MLM, multi-level marketing parents, one that exploits the uh, eating disorder of their child. And yeah, so I might as well just get some triggers out of the way. There is eating disorder, which I will reference as ED. I do think that there is predators that look for children's content. So we'll be talking about that and why I think it's absolutely creepy for certain parents to do certain things on the internet and allow their children to do and profit off of it. Let's just start with that there is no regulations. Yes, that's so shitty, right? Excuse my language. I will cuss on this one. I am sorry. There is no regulations for protecting children for the amount of hours that they make content with you for or you're recording them, um, at least in California. And for the famous acting children, they have tutors and teachers on set. There is regulations to make sure that they're getting their education as well. There is trusts put forth so that they can have money for when they are old enough to manage their own income and stuff like that. Nope, these people are just purely making profit off of their children, making this content and performing for a camera where every aspect of their lives can be turned into content so that they can profit off of it. I don't like that. I do have an admittance. I used to try to be a mommy vlogger before I knew better. It felt unnatural. It felt uncomfortable. It quit, I quit very quickly on that. I don't think I ever actually posted anything on the internet with it. It was an idea of, oh, I like this hobby. I think it'd be cute to watch, you know, have my children do it with me. I think I have or had one video where my daughter did my makeup and like, I wasn't trying to sell anything, but I just, I don't know, and she was always asking to be on the camera. It was uncomfortable, it was awkward, she always wanted to perform. I noticed her attitude would change differently towards it. It was, oh, we can turn this, and like she turned into a little worker bee, and it was only one video that I made like that, and she would see me making videos, and of course want to be a part of it, but she was like five years old. Like, there's no reason for it. It, I just, that I put a, like, I just felt icky about it myself. So that's kind of when I started being like, okay, well, what, you know, and I still watched family channels and stuff like that. And then I don't even know how to explain why I got turned off of it. I just, I, I realized that it's just so unrealistic and the work that you have to put into it and the persona that you have to do and the vulnerability. And I didn't, consider the mental health aspects of it before, I guess. You don't know how your child is going to react. You don't know your ch what your child's mental health is going to be when they are adults. Are they going to be embarrassed that you decided to put their, their private, personal, in-home, safe space life for thousands to possibly even millions of people to see? You don't know how it's going to affect them later. Are they gonna be grateful? Possibly. Are they going to absolutely hate you? Possibly. And especially with the stuff with like Ruby Frank going around, we already know that her older child, I think it's her daughter, is absolutely against it. Ran away, basically, as soon as she got old enough. Like, that's just an extreme example there. Yes, she is going through her abuse 
charges. I should just say A. Abuse is A. I don't know. I don't think I'll ever be monetized, but just in case. So, I mean, it's just one example. There's no, there's no protection guarantee. You don't know how much time and effort's being put into teaching these children to perform in their own household for this content. You don't know what privacy it's violating and what they won't agree with later in life. Just, just in general. Their friends might see it on the internet later in life. Do you really want your friends to know how you were potty trained when you're in high school? Like to be able to go back and find that? Or your medical issues? They can't consent to that. Most of them are really young. And it's just, I don't know, I've decided it, it, it's, it's not okay. It's not a way to protect your child. In my opinion, I, I've kind of over the years have unfollowed all family channels that I was watching. I mean, look at the Ace family. There, there are controversies all the time and they're, that's gonna follow their children for the rest of their lives. And I'm trying to keep to the more common because I do know that there's other family channels that don't have any controversies right now or whatnot. We don't know what's gonna happen with those later. But I'm just talking about like the popular ones right now because I don't want to drag people that aren't in this in this. And I also don't want people to feel like I'm just talking shit about their choices that they're making for their family, even though I am talking shit about it. I don't think family channels should be a thing anymore. I think it was a cool experiment. Yeah, whatever, but it, it's just, no. Another thing is there's just creeps on the internet. Most of the time you blow up on the internet with your children because the wrong crowd. Yeah, you might get your loyal followers that are just genuine about caring for your family and watching you guys grow and the lessons you're learning and relating to you because they're parents too or whatnot. I'm not saying that that audience isn't there. It is. But unfortunately, that comes along with the aspect of creeps. You don't know what stuff they're into. You don't know these people. It's not a natural relationship. They're exploiting their whole family or even certain aspects of it for a profit and also exposing them to the dangers of the internet. Like you don't know why these people are saving your content. You don't know why these people are downloading and sharing your content. And there's so many studies and a lot more a lot of people out there that will get into it. All you have to do is just look it up. You can, and other people do go into it ignorantly, but once you know better, do better. Like if there's concerns and you're seeing inappropriate comments and like, oh, I'm even gonna put this just on the feature for YouTube. If you say, hey, this is for kill for children, like these topics, the comments are automatically turned off. But on other platforms, they're not. There's inappropriate comments. I know these parents can see them like, oh, look, your kid dressed in that or smash or whatever gross thing you're gonna say about a freaking child. Like stop. I guess I'll get into my first example. Ren Eleanor. Yes, I'm pretty sure we have all heard about that little TikTok mom creep. Like she knows, I'm sure all you have to do is search her name in controversy or problematic or whatnot. Like she knows she will purposely dress her two year old in what could be considered outfits for adults. I, I've, I've, I can't even watch it, but it's just, it's gross. Or eating foods that there's specific terms. I'm not into the fan, I don't know the fancy terms, but eating like hot dogs or a banana or cucumbers or certain fair foods and stuff like that. And that is inviting creepy people into your life. That is inviting that environment of her baby. Like, that's all alleged, these are all my opinions, don't come for me, or do you know what, come for me. If you have a different opinion, try to defend this. <sighs> Make yourself look stupid. There are ways to go do stuff on the internet and keep it private with your friends and family. Those who care will actually keep up and ask you about your family and if you know them in real life. There are so many people telling Ren's mom to stop and begging her to get her child off of the internet because of the way she's exploiting her child. It's everything from, like I said, the food, the clothing that she wears. Look at the views. Look at the comments. Look at how many downloads. You can compare it to, let's say she wasn't in the videos and the other ones that just don't, the other types of videos that might be up there, 
that don't have that type of traction. He knows. And especially since she's been called out and allegedly, supposedly, FBI is looking into her now. Because th these behaviors and the way she's profiting off of it is just not natural. If you have your child's best interest at heart, and once you learn and know better, and you, you, you have the responsibility to protect a child, do better. And she's just choosing to blatantly ignore it and profit off of this, and it's sick. Another example that I have is a little girl named Hannah. The way she's being exploited, in my opinion, is different. Her mom is exploiting her own daughter's ED to profit off of. She appointed her eight-year-old daughter as the spokesperson for ARFID, which is the Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder. It is a new ED that is a lot, in a lot of children, there are adults that have this disorder. It does need awareness. I understand the importance of needing to bring awareness to this, but let an adult be the spokesperson. Don't look at your child who is suffering, who has the potential to be malnourished and is crying and gagging and not wanting to try new foods at that time as the spokesperson. You can't just be like, oh, I'm suffering for this from this because you're not. You are not like I'm talking to the mother directly. You are not suffering from this disorder. Your child is eight years old and does not have the mental capacity to consent to being the spokesperson of this disorder. In my opinion, you posted on the internet to profit from it and it's not okay. So the people with this disorder, because it does need to have attention brought to it, is they are extremely selective eaters and can have little interest in eating food. Um, they can have their safe foods, but this would also to contribute to malnutrition and poor growth. And that is something that does need to be, you know, talked about, studied, figure out ways to make it better, find ways to motivate eating and trying new things. Like I will say it again, that is so important. Her mom runs her social medias, but she also tries to in comments say, hey, I'm not gonna let my child be on the internet for a long time on social media. When your child is social media, she's trying to play it off like her child is coming up with these ideas and these topics and to be on camera and cross posting it. And she's trying to supposedly not take credit for it and all of that baloney. Her own mother is cross posting this. She is on everything from TikTok, Instagram, YouTube and Facebook like you cannot tell me that this is the child this child's choice she is tagging huge corporate companies like goldfish and stuff like that to gain the attention and they're responding of course they're responding this person's getting a ton of attraction towards these things as like a safe food for this disorder but like are you trying to get sponsorships if you're trying to bring awareness and stuff why are you profiting off of it why are you monetized? That's not normal protective behavior in my opinion. It's just, it's gross to me that she is recording her child in distress. I don't want to go on the internet to see a little girl crying and gagging because she's scared of a food. Because she's scared, like let, like she is suffering. Her mental health at that point shouldn't be, okay, I'm performing for a camera and I have to try it because the camera's on for mommy, in my opinion. It should be something that they cope with together in a supportive field, I guess I'm trying to say, like in a controlled, safe environment, not for th hundreds of thousands of people to potentially watch. That's sick. I don't think it's mentally healthy for your child to be put into that position or any child. It's it's one thing if she were to write a thing saying, hey, I'm going through this, blah, 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 and mom read it out loud, and then the mom talk about her experience. Like there is ways to bring awareness to this ED without exploiting an, a, a child. It, it, I guess in the long run is what I'm trying to say. You don't need to profit and try to gain all this attention. And then in her story of why and how it became what it is now, that she used to pretend to record her daughter to motivate her, well, continue doing that. 
Like if that's working and it's a type of therapy for your child, continue doing that. But to actually like go through and publicly do it and go through with it and become the spokesperson or whatever for it and use problematic hashtags to gain the traction for it to get attention and tag giant companies and have it completely monetized and whatnot is just, it's, it's gross. It, it's wrong. And it, just the fact that the money has gotten into their head to find this type of behavior acceptable. My concerns for, for this kid's mental health just in general is when they're older, they're gonna have that on the internet forever. They're gonna know that at the most vulnerable point of their childhood, their own mother, their own parents exploited that for attention and money to where they're crying and stuff. Like we don't know what her mental health will be when she's older. And I keep repeating it and saying it because it is important. On the surface, it looks innocent. Like yes, bring awareness. Look how brave this little girl is. She has a system. She tries it three times before she decides she can't do it. And it, it, it could be a beautiful thing in private. Under that surface, seeing how this whole ED is potential for content for hundreds of thousands of people to watch, to profit off of, and to use as an advertisement point to gain the attention of huge companies to possibly get sponsorships and possibly profit off of recording your child suffer on the internet without even comprehending or caring what their mental health is at this point and what it might be in the future. You don't know the type of resentment, anger, therapy that they're going to possibly need and have it later on in the life. It, it just becomes a point where it becomes gross. And I think that the message in the beginning was good, but they let the, the profit and the attention get to their head and it really takes away and puts an uglier spotlight. There are adults that have this, this disorder commenting and begging her, stop. This is the most vulnerable part of their lives and they're not the spokesperson. No one asked you to say, hey, my child's suffering from this and having an eight year old become the spokesperson. Even in the descriptions, it's like, I suffer from this in first person in like this weird way of making it look like this eight year old is writing this description. None of it is from the mother's perspective, which I also find to be weird. Yeah, you could be a parent and you could talk about your experience and what you're going through, which also might be a little bit much, but it's less embarrassing than having your crying, suffering child on the internet. They're gonna be remembered for like that for the rest of their lives, even if they do grow and be able to manage it. That is gonna be a stigma they're gonna have for the rest of their life that the world will know about and judge or bring up or think it's appropriate to bring up over and over and over in their life. Do they not, do these people not think about the potential harm that this can cause them later in life? Children cannot consent. There is ways to go about life like this without exploiting your child for money, attention, content, and all of that. But that's just, that, that, that's just one. There are so many other creators that use their children's medical problems for not only content, but to profit off of. It's okay to say, hey, we're a family's going through this. Let's bring awareness and tell your adult perspective as a parent going through this without giving all of your child's medical history and details. Give the scientific facts of what it is and not what that child's personally going through. I 100% support learning about these things affecting our children in the society, but I do not support you profiting it and scripting and making your child suffer for the camera. We don't know what profits and stuff that they are making, obviously. We don't know if she does have funds set aside for this child. We will never know, hopefully. Hopefully we will never know, that's not our business, but my concerns are the profits that this mom or these families that do this type of behavior are profiting off of it and will not compensate their child later on in the future. And they're gonna have that resentment held against them once they realize and can fully comprehend and understand what it is that you profited off of 
in their childhood. This exploiting children thing also falls into the direct sales or MLM marketing tactics for their distributors to exploit their children for profit, using them as content to sell whatever it is that they are selling. I see this all the time. Okay, at the end of this video, I'll talk about examples and who and where you can get some of this information and where I got some of it and people that make a lot more content about this. This is just a condensed version, 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 <laughs> version of my thoughts on these subjects. But for the MLM one, yeah, like I've, I've seen personally videos of, I don't know where they're at now. Obviously I don't have them saved. I didn't know I was gonna ever make a video like this in my entire life, but where this mom has, works for whatever company and lines up her children. Hannah Alonzo in one of her MLM fails, top fails, it's in one of her videos. Maybe if I find it, I'll post it. She like lined all her kids up and let them choose an unhealthy snack versus a healthy snack from whatever it is that she's promoting. Tried to lure them or, or guide them into making the right choice and then blame the child's bad behavior that chose to have a regular candy bar instead of the healthy alternative snack. Like she tried to blame that bad behavior on it. There's moms out there that are, you know, I'm gonna use the oily life, the oil ML MLM moms, MLM moms. They suggest ingesting them and make wild medical claims and use their children as like experiments. This will make colic go away. Put this in their bottle for this or rub it on their tummies for this. And like, they don't even talk about problems that it could have in the reactions your children can have. Ugh, it, it's disgusting. There's moms out there that, mom, I, I keep saying moms, there's fathers too, just people in general, where they'll use their ch children's medical history as a sob story of, support us so that we can get through this or or just like attacking other parents for don't you want to be a stay-at-home mom don't you want to be able to spend more time with your children don't you want to be able to stay home maybe we should retire your husband you know just just weird cultural behaviors like that that could affect the whole family and they can use as like content to sell whatever it is that they're trying to sell so making asinine medical medical claims for their products to be able to heal aspects of their lives or supplements that they give their children that is not medically proven to be safe for their children. There's just so many examples out there that I don't have other specific ones. But if you're more interested in that, Hannah Alonzo, CC Suarez are really good places to look for that. But I just wanted to bring that up because that is another way that people exploit their children on the internet is to, and to profit off of, is to use them as a selling point for whatever product they're trying to sell or whatever attention they're trying to gain or use it as a tactic to manipulate and bring people into their business or opportunity as attacking their family model or how they parent or whatnot. Like it's it's just insane that their children became this this tactic or this part of their lives that, that they find acceptable to share or to do or mom shame just for that type of content to profit off of. Once again, they are profiting off of telling these overly personal stories or making weird asinine medical claims. It's just, it's atrocious. Like the, the way that they find it acceptable to sell their product or whatever, or beg for their, for, for people to buy from them because they're suffering at this point of the life. Like it's one thing to ask for help, get a GoFundMe, to use it as a tactic and share inappropriate or make inappropriate and asinine unrealistic claims to sell a product is not okay. Just because a product says it's clean doesn't mean it's okay. You can't claim it to be more affordable and unlike anything else because you sell it, that there's nothing else like it around. You can't say, oh, you're a bad mom if you don't use these cleaning products because supposedly they're clean and there's nothing more affordable out there when you can find the same exact thing for probably a million dollars cheaper. Yes, that's an exaggeration, but yes, for a more affordable price. I don't know, I'm gonna make more of an MLM video, so I don't wanna go too deep into it. Yeah, so when it comes to MLM, a weird gross thing that I've also seen is 
moms working in the labor and delivery. Like, thank goodness I have this community for this business that I'm supposedly profiting off of and join my team while I work in labor and delivery instead of focusing on becoming a new mother. Oh, I just had a baby hours ago, buy my products. Like your child and your new family has nothing to do with you and your team or whatever for this opportunity. Like your children have nothing to do with it. Keep them out of it. I mean, I guess I already got into like the family channel aspect of it, but I also wanted to wait until later in the video to bring up my thoughts of the potential of abuse. I wanted to tread this one a little lightly because there is a lot going on with Ruby Frank and the actual stuff that is disgusting and horrific and heartbreaking. Sorry, it, it gets me um, a little teary thinking about what those children gone through, but it, it, it does open the door for you to think that behavior is a little bit more acceptable. I mean, just look at the, the cult tactics that they tried using with, especially like with a bite model and the manipulations Jody did, you know? So it, it just has the potential for you to overreact or try to share, I don't know, punishments on the internet. Like it's no one's business. I think that you should keep your kids off the internet and keep health, uh, healthier ways in your life for it, but I just wanted to just say that, that it has the potential to be used as a form of abuse or, or in ways neglect or anything like that. Just enjoy your family, treat them nice, have good conversations and discussions. It's not used, it's not content. Your life and how you decide to raise your family is not content. It, it's, it's not. If you're unsure of how to approach a certain subject, it is 100% to call talk to a pediatrician, hey, we're going through this and they can direct you, you know? There's even therapy, there is other family members. If you're not sure how to healthily approach a certain situation, there are always ways to find information on how to do it that are not the internet or sharing your entire life with the public. It, it's not the time nor the place. And I really think that that should be focused on a lot. And I, I just wanted to kind of throw that in there. That is a concern that I do have that is very real. I mean, we're literally watching that happen live in front of us now, especially if you're part of the YouTube community, you know that this has been talked about everywhere. Like they had millions of viewers and it was happening in front of our eyes. And even with people with concerns bringing it to their attention, it was still not taken care of which is unfortunate. So really that shows all in all, the internet's not the place for it. Um, maybe those concerns would have been taken more seriously if their whole lives weren't on the internet. We will never know. We don't know. But what I do know is it didn't help the situation. It probably escalated and allowed them to be open to more manipulation and abuse because they were on the internet and had such a huge fan base. I know I wouldn't wanna look back on my life and know that my parents shared every aspect of our lives on the internet. So I'm going to leave the family channel stuff there. I've already talked about it enough, but I did want to throw in that little bit of an aspect of it. Let's talk about the moms that purposely entice and use the promotion of eating unhealthy foods and being the most unhealthy parents, people, lives out there. Some of them, you know, you could try to say that it is for funny, haha -ha satire purposes, but you can't tell me that every single one of the channels or people out there, whether it be TikTok, YouTube, whatever form, format, or, or, or platform they decide to use where they're feeding their children adult portions of three pound chocolate bars, filling up mini fridges with nothing but soda, candy, sugar, anything like that, no fruits, no vegetables, no, no life lessons of poor control, nothing like that. You can't tell me that those kids are not eating that. I'm sorry, in my opinion, they're not. There are content creators that use their children and their diets as content to get sponsorships, profit from, watch time hours, whatever in the heck they wanna profit off of or how they profit off of, off of it is disgusting. I'm just gonna say that I think it, as an adult, our responsibility is to teach our children how to listen to their bodies, have a well-rounded diet of everything in every food group there is, and healthy portions that are adequate for their size, body type, metabolisms. You know these children best. We don't, we are on the internet. 
okay? You know how much your child needs to eat. You also need to teach them to listen to their bodies, that they're beautiful inside and out. Just the mental health aspects of it, it can contribute to future EDs in their life. That it, It's disturbing, like there's people that will literally be like, I'm gonna give my two year old all of this gross, unhealthy, you know, food and it's, if, if your child already has an ED, and those are certain parts of like uh, the Afrid or Arfid child, like she has her safe foods, yes, they might not be the healthiest, you're gonna do what you can to get calories and stuff for your into your children. But that's also not our business, not our not our pony, not our show. Like it's not our business. Like keep your children's medical stuff for one out of it. But two, don't sit there and try to promote just, oh, we're gonna do a, uh, what is it? Oh, what did this mom do? Oh, she was like, my children are gonna eat only McDonald's for 24 hours for all 12 of my kids. Like what? You know, they each have mini fridges. I've already about the mini fridges up in their rooms for all of that and then try to claim it to be satire like and make offhanded I don't know I don't believe it there's no way you are wasting that much money just for content to make people believe that your children are eating this shit don't do it don't profit off of it they also promote this I don't care attitude. I'm gonna feed my children what I want. Like it's just, it's not. Kiki Chanel has a really good um, video on it. She has a lot of anti MLM stuff too. If you wanna see people behaving badly for profit, <laughs> that type of stuff. But I really like her content on children should not be influencers, uh, you know, promoting unhealthy eating. Like she has a lot more on it than I, I obviously do. This is my first video ever like this. I'm still learning how to do this, but I think I've made my thoughts on it very clear. There are just appropriate things to do on the internet and not appropriate things to do on the internet and promoting a shitty eating style and profiting off of it to make money is not okay. It's definitely not something that should be shared. Like other kids are gonna see this on the internet and want to eat like that. And even if it is satire, they're gonna think that, that it's real. And that's not okay. That's putting an unnecessary argument into another family's life, all because you want to make money on the internet over something so silly as arbitrary as filling up mini fridges for the week full of hundreds of dollars worth of sugar chips snacks and stuff like that. Maybe if it was for, you know, you need that much snacks to last you the year, maybe, maybe, but still like, and you can see the portion sizes that these parents are putting for their kids. Like their 14 year olds getting the same amount as their two year old. They're inviting overeating as a thing, like I have a really hard time with overeating and not listening to my body and getting all of the food groups and whatnot. Like so many people have so many problems when it comes to eating healthy and dieting and whatever you need to call it here, it's unfortunate and it's promotion like that that I really think feeds into it. So I guess overall, my whole video is about don't exploit children on the internet. I know I mentioned a lot of moms doing it. I do understand, that's just what I've seen the most of, that there are managers, fathers, parents that are guardians of these children, exploiting their children in these way. It is not just moms. Sometimes as a mom who talks a lot about moms and two other moms, it's just easier to say that. My overall thoughts still don't exploit your children. I will say it over and over and over and over again. I'm very passionate about it. And I just don't think that it's something that should be so openly promoted online and just kind of learn and research and beware of what is appropriate and inappropriate on the internet. There are ways to make content without exploiting children. There are ways to bring awareness to certain things without exploiting and profiting off of your children. It is not their responsibility to do adult things, to worry about adult worries. And I feel like this does take away from their childhood. It's not safe healthy, mentally, or physically. Um, it's not good for the environment of your home. Um, it's supposed to be their safe space. They're supposed to have their own privacy and not have worries of what the world's going to think about them. It's sad that that's come a reality these days. Don't use your children to sell products. That's not what they're for. I'm sorry, you have children to have a family, not to gain money off of the family, to use their medical, life just be existing as a selling point to make profit off of. 
It's gross. Don't do that either. Um, especially do not, I already kind of mentioned the uh, medical stuff, but do not exploit your child's ED for profit for clicks, views, attention on the internet. They're medical. I've already said it before. I'm gonna keep saying it because that seems to be the most common recently. Keep your, your children's medical stuff private. It's no one else's business. And try to just in general, keep your children off the internet. Like I said, there's ways that you can talk, you know, I don't think, I don't see anything wrong about just telling a cute antidotal story, but think about the effects that it'll have them later in life. Are they gonna be embarrassed that I talked about this on the internet? If this is my experience of them going through these certain things, don't go into massive detail about what you believe they are experiencing. You don't know their mental health at a later date. There, there's just ways to not embarrass your children on the internet. You know, don't let strangers gawk at their, their videos and save and download to their phones videos of your children. You don't know them. They are strangers. You don't have a real relationship with them. There are creeps out there. There is no reason to have your child eating or, you know, in bathing suits for hundreds, thousands, millions of people to view. It's just unnecessary. You have friends, you have family. They're the only people that they should matter to. It's weird to me how open and okay children being on the internet has become with knowing there are creeps out there in the world. I, that really concerns me. I was ignorant of the fact before and probably still am a little ignorant. I will continue researching this and getting into what not to do on the internet, okay? The people that I have gained a lot of this from is CC Suarez, Hannah Alonzo. She has a lot of, you know, the parents with the MLMs and selling stuff and the atrocious things that they do and exploit their children to do. Like I said, CC Suarez, uh, Kiki Chanel, or channel, I think it's Kiki Chanel. They ha they go in a lot of detail. There is also a couple other, you know, diamond painting people in the community who are able to talk about their families and their family experiences and certain things. There's even a mom on here that has a ch has children with special needs and she's able to bring awareness without embarrassing her children on the internet, without gaining an, a profit off of talking about their children like that. There are so many ways you can talk about being a parent if you have to talk about your children that you don't profit from or possibly damage their mental health. Just be aware, do some research. I think every adult out there, especially if you're a content creator, do research, learn about it. It's okay to do that. Another thing is don't feed your children shit on the internet just for attention. It's your responsibility to teach them how to be healthy. So I just kind of want to reiterate all of the points that I have made so far. Let's talk about a happier note. I am a mom and I will share little things about my children. And I will always keep in mind of what they might see later in life. I, I, I will re really work hard and thrive from, you know, before I started on this diamond painting journey and doing whipping chats and whipping opinions and stuff to make sure it never harms them in the future. And if there ever comes a point that they say, hey, I don't want you to talk about me at all, I'll say it. And I know I keep repeating, children cannot consent. The only thing I can do is focus on my experiences as a mother and keep their personal stuff to minimal detail. Now, I do have a story about my child, my daughter getting hurt. I don't go into the medical detail of how bad it was or whatnot and what I think she was experiencing at the time. I'm focused on me, my experience, and how I was unable to handle my child getting hurt for the first time. So I, I just try to keep the perspectives like that. I love being a mom and I love being able to share stuff about my children, but I also want to limit it. That's why I talk about my dog so much. That's why I keep it to those perspectives. I think I'm done. I, I think I made my point and I feel good getting it out. I want this to be an open conversation. If you see weird, crazy things on the internet or have stories and people and stuff that you think are examples for it, let me know. If you like content like this and you want me to keep making opinions, I'll, I, I will either way. But if there's an opinion that you wanna specifically know about that I might have, put it down below. Don't forget to um, like and subscribe. Watching people's content all the way through really helps with the algorithm and other pushing it out to more people to see, especially if you think it's an important discussion like this. I would love to get some traction on this. And I do think this is a conversation that needs to be widely talked about. I will have the people that I talked about linked below. I'm done. Have a beautiful day.